a reading from the letter of Paul to the Ephesians. Brothers, each of us has received God's favor in the measure in which Christ bestows it. It is he who gave apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, and teachers in roles of service for the faithful to build up the body of Christ till we become one in faith and in the knowledge of God's Son and form that perfect man who is Christ come to full stature. Let us then be children no longer, tossed here and there, carried about by every wind of doctrine that originates in human trickery and skill in proposing error. Rather, let us profess the truth in love and grow to the full maturity of Christ the Head. Verbum Domini. Dominos Fobiscum, et cum spirit bless your sancti evangelii secundum marcum. Jesus was revealed to the eleven. He said to them, 
Go into the whole world and proclaim the good news to all creation. The man who believes in it and accepts baptism will be saved. The man who refuses to believe in it will be condemned. Signs like these will accompany those who have professed their faith. They will use my name to expel demons. They will speak entirely new languages. They will be able to handle serpents. They will be able to drink deadly poison without harm, and the sick upon whom they lay their hands will recover. Then, after speaking to them, the Lord Jesus was taken up into heaven and took his seat at God's right hand. The eleven went forth and preached everywhere. The Lord continued to work with them throughout and confirmed the message through the signs which accompanied them. Verbum Domini. About a week ago, I lost my voice, so I'm asking St. Anthony to help me to find it today. He is a finder of lost things. And when you go to parish churches, you'll often find especially two statues on almost every church, I think. One to St. Anthony, one to St. Therese. Because people have found in these two saints help in their needs in a special way, that in a very special way, like the apostles in today's gospel, Jesus is ascending, he sends them out. He says that signs will accompany what they do. They will deliver people, that they will bring healing to people, and so on. And so the Lord always associated others in his work, the apostles, the 72 disciples, and even from heaven, now they are closer to the Lord than they were even on this earth and are able to assist us. I call them our older brothers and sisters who walked this way with the same human nature, fallen human nature that we have, and yet they were able to overcome sin and temptation in their lives, to persevere in virtue, and to help spread the kingdom of God. And so people have especially found help in St. Anthony, even in the little things of life. You know, my sister and my brother-in-law, they had rented some property, they're farmers in Iowa, and they had rented some property from a lady in her 90s, her name was Helen, and she's just a delightful Protestant lady full of faith. And so they brought me over there to visit with her uh, one day, and she was talking about how uh, one day she was out in the yard and she was working and one of the lenses in her glass, her glasses had fallen out. And she's spending hours raking and trying to find this lost lens while her neighbor was a Catholic said, well, ask St. Anthony for help. Who's St. Anthony? So she explained that to, to her. So they said a prayer to St. Anthony. Immediately she said, there it was. It became visible to her. On one occasion, uh, Father Anthony, I'd gone to him, I said, I just can't find these keys. I don't know where these keys are. Was he, he said, of course, his patron is St. Anthony. Did you ask the great St. Anthony? Oh, okay. So I asked St. Anthony, and immediately comes to my mind where those, those keys were. And when we think about that, you know, he's a finder of lost things. He's much more than that, of course. But it shows us that God is not unconcerned, even with the little troubles of our lives. Deacon Gerald was telling me, he's a chief financial officer here at EWTN, that he's invoked Anthony many times to help find some lost figures or things that needed to be balanced on the balance sheet. So God is not too busy, if you, if you will, to be concerned with the little things of our life. And that's one of the things that St. Anthony shows to us, this devotion to St. Anthony. About a week ago, <clears throat> I was in Fatima making some programs with our EWTN crew in, in preparation for the 100th anniversary of the apparitions of Our Lady, which is 2017. This year is the 100th anniversary of the apparitions of the angels. 
to the three shepherd children. And one of the people that I interviewed there in the square in the sanctuary of Fatima is one of the, uh, one of the chaplains there in Fatima. His name is Father, Father Francisco. A lot of the people in Portugal are named Francisco Jacinta Lucia. And so he was given the name Francisco, grew up knowing about those apparitions, visiting the shrine, volunteering as a seminarian there, and, and so on, and, and helping there. So we were commenting, there's a colonnade in the square, and there's saints on top of the colonnade. And so I was asking him about that, and he was saying that they were, in particular, saints known for their devotion to Our Lady. So there's St. Louis Marie de Montfort, there's St. Simon Stock, there's other saints, and there's also four Portuguese saints. So he said there's St. John of God, and there's St. Anthony of Lisbon. I said, St. Anthony of Lisbon? We know him as St. Anthony of Padua. He says, yes, but he was born here. <laughs> He was born in Lisbon. And if you know the story of St. Anthony at the end of the 12th century, it was actually on the Feast of the Assumption, August 15th in the year 1195, that he was born in Lisbon. And he was baptized in the Church of St. Mary in Lisbon. At the age of 15, he completed his studies at the Cathedral School of St. Mary. His mother's name was Mary. His father's name was Martin. And his mother, at his birth, dedicated him to the Blessed Virgin Mary and nurtured a deep devotion to the Blessed Virgin Mary in him. It was throughout his life that he had this devotion to Our Lady. And it's said, in fact, that he, that he laid the foundations for the eventual proclamation of the dogmas of the Assumption of the Blessed Virgin Mary and of her Immaculate Conception. In fact, Pope Pius XII, when he proclaimed the dogma of the Assumption, he refers to St. Anthony as being one of those who preached about the Assumption of Our Lady. And then at the end of his life, as he was anointed, receiving extreme unction, he intoned his favorite hymn, O Gloriosa Domina, O Glorious Lady. So we see here his own devotion to Our Lady, how he is often pictured with a lily because Our Lady helped him to preserve his purity. He died at a young age, just 36. He began his religious life as an Augustinian canon, and he was known as being this great student, remarkable student who could remember everything. And in fact, when he was canonized less than a year after his death, the Pope, Pope Gregory IX, called him, St. Anthony, the Ark of the Covenant, because the Ark of the Covenant in the Old Testament was where the Ten Commandments were kept. And he was referring to the fact that Anthony's remarkable memory, it said that he knew the entire Bible from memory, both the Old and the New Testaments. In one of his sermons, he quotes the scriptures 184 times. It must have been a long sermon. A lot of... So he knew the scriptures, and you see how fortuitous this was, providential this was, that he's trained for like 11 years with the Augustinian canons. And then when he joins the Franciscans, so inspired by these martyrs that had gone to Morocco that passed through Portugal, that he wanted to become a friar too with that kind of dedication, that Francis would come to know of his remarkable talents when unexpectedly he would preach just extemporaneously one time and people were moved by his words that he made him the first teacher of the Franciscan order. And so it's said that Anthony had the mind of St. Augustine, this brilliant uh, intellect, but he had the heart of St. Francis. 
And so he was able to do what Francis told him to do, not to extinguish the spirit of prayer. It wasn't just to be this kind of you know, high theology sort of thing, but it was to be lived out. And in our Office of Readings today, St. Anthony says that actions speak louder than words. It's something that needs to be lived. And for the Franciscan mentality, knowledge always must be at the service of love. That has to be the goal. Whatever knowledge we have is only at the service of love, to make God better known and loved and to help to enlighten other people so that they too may love God with a greater fervor. <clears throat> One of his um, contemporaries was an Augustinian abbot. And here's what he said of St. Anthony. He was a dear friend of St. Anthony. His name was Thomas Gallus. He said, I myself as a close friend was able to observe in the holy brother Anthony of the Friars Minor that though he was not well read in the natural sciences, he had a pure spirit and a burning heart and was a man on fire for God. All this enabled him easily to understand with all his heart all the riches and depths of mystical theology. Therefore, I may well apply to him the words which sacred scripture says of John the Baptist. He was a lamp burning and shining because his heart was burning with love for God. He was a shining example also to men. And you know, St. Francis, he said the rule of the friars is this, they're to observe the gospel. Well, Anthony knew it by memory. It was something deep in his own heart. And this was what he was teaching the friars and that he was striving to live himself. As I said, he died at the age of just 36, was canonized less than a year later. There were some 46 miracles uh, that were uh, approved by the Holy See at his canonization. 46 miracles, favors that people had received. And so Gregory the Ninth moved quickly to, to, to canonize him. So we are happy that we have these older brothers and sisters in Christ who can help us even in the little troubles and difficulties of our lives. St. Paul in today's letter to the Ephesians he talks about, he says, let us not be children any longer, tossed here and there, carried about by every wind of doctrine that originates in human trickery and skill in proposing error. Let us profess the truth in love. There were different false teachings that were going on at the time of St. Anthony. And so he was sent to northern Italy where there were these false teachers and also southern France and he would preach the truth with love and draw many back to the truth about Christ. So may this network also be an instrument like St. Anthony to bring the truth to others with love. May I close finally with just a couple words about our own Father Anthony. Uh, Father Anthony has uh, been a blessing to our viewers, to our community, and this is name day. I ask you to just pray for him. He's spent 16 years here as a priest now. He was ordained in the year 2000. And the last nine years, he has served our community as a community servant, taking the responsibility of our community, helping us to accomplish a, a number of things for the good of the future of our community. And I uh, just ask you to remember him in your prayers this day in gratitude for his own work and mission here at EWTN and with the Friars.